Okay, we're on the last lesson of chapter 4, which is um, making conversions, 4.4. Uh, and for the most part, all they talk about in this section is um, this thing called a bushel. And to be honest, I'd never heard of a bushel in my life uh, until I taught this course. Um, so I'm not going to be teaching the bushel. Um, apparently the bushel is whatever this says, uh, 2,220 cubic inches or approximately eight gallons. So a bushel is about eight gallons and this is an, uh, this is an American unit that I've never heard of before. Um, so any type of bushel question that you see on this book uh, you're not going to be tested on on my tests. So we're skipping these questions that involve the bushel. So that gets us to question seven eight and nine I believe and that's it for today's lesson these are the conversions um, that they want us to use for question seven eight and nine um, this is similar to the one kilogram equals 2.2 .2 pounds so it's just the reverse if you had one pound it's about half a kilo uh, this one is one ounce is roughly 28 grams um, this one's pretty widely known uh, I think most adults know that an ounce is about 28 grams and then this one here that uh, TN and little t it's important and it's on my formula sheet to be able to tell a difference between the two so little t little t is the metric ton and they spell it like t-o-n-n-e and then little t-n is the imperial ton and they spell it t-o-n so they're saying that one imperial ton is approximately 0 0.9 metric tons and that's what that one says right there alright question seven Alphonse making chicken kebabs 14 people his recipe suggests about seven ounces of chicken per person and at the grocery store the weight of a chicken is labeled in kilograms so how much chicken does Alphonse need to buy so he needs to buy for 14 people and each person needs about seven ounces so 14 times 7 98 ounces altogether. So how many kilograms does he need? Well I know that one ounce is 28.3 grams so 98 ounces would be x grams cross multiply 98 times 28.3 x is 2773.4 Remember that 1,000 grams make the one kilogram. So clearly we have two kilograms and almost three kilograms. You can see this is the almost three kilograms. So basically what you're thinking about is moving this decimal three places. So we have 2.7734 kilograms. Now when you're in the store you're probably going to look for about 2.8 kilograms you round it you know maybe you're looking for three kilograms if you have to buy it per kilo so this guy Alphonse probably needs to buy three kilos of chicken <laughs> number eight a crane can lift a maximum of five little t and little t is metric ton so a crane can lift a maximum of five metric tons and I would probably just jot that down because I have a hard time remembering little t versus tn. Okay, sandstone weighs about 150 pounds per cubic foot. 150 pounds per cubic foot. Okay, that's how you translate that. And a container contains 70 cubic feet of sandstone. So cubic feet goes down here, 70 cubic feet we can solve for x pounds cross multiplying 
this is a 1 down here, 150 times 70 is 10,500 pounds. It says the crane can lift 5 metric tons. So can it lift this container? So 10,500, let's convert those. We know that one imperial ton is 2,000 pounds. We have 10,500 pounds, so we can solve for imperial ton. Cross multiply 10,500 times 1 dividing by 2,000. X is 5.25 imperial ton. I know that one imperial ton is approximately 0 0.9. metric ton that's from the top of the page right there okay the five and a quarter tons that we just solved for is the imperial ton and we need to solve for the metric ton cross multiplying 5.25 times 0 0.9 4.725 4 imperial tons the crane can lift five metric tons, so can the crane be used? Yes, the crane can be used. Last question of the section. Josephine is sending a gift of a bottle of maple syrup that weighs three pounds. Okay, so the bottle is three pounds. And the three packages of jerky that each weigh 100 grams. So three times 100 grams, that's obviously 300 grams. If the package's total weight is less than 2 kilograms, she can ship it at a cheaper rate. Will she be able to do so? So what we need to do is have this uh, amount added up. So three pounds plus 300 grams and it has to be in kilograms to check if it's less than 2 kilograms. So that's what we need to check. So we need to check if the thing on the left is less than the thing on the right. So in order to do this they have to have the same units. So grams to kilograms is easy. You just divide by a thousand. We've talked about that in 3.3. .3. It's three decimal moves to the left because the unit gets bigger. Unit gets bigger, so do, so you divide by a thousand. If the unit gets smaller, you times by a thousand. Okay. All right. Now we got to do the pounds. I think that the page said. On the last page it said 0 0.45 kilograms equals 1 pound. We have 3 pounds, so x kilogram cross multiplying. 3 times 0.45 is 1.35 kilograms. Add those up and it's 1.65 kilograms. And that is indeed less than 2 kilograms, so yes she could ship it at the cheaper rate. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, that's it for chapter four. You will not have any questions on the bushel, so you don't have to do number one. Number two. And even five and six, I don't even think I would worry about those ones too much. Uh, from this section, maybe just do one, three, and four. And then definitely practice the chapter test. You can see it goes through temperature. A question like this is exactly on the test. Four is good. Five is good. Six is... This one looks kind of weird. Seven is good. I'd probably skip six. Eight is good, and I would skip nine. And that's the end of chapter four.